So going back to where we left off from the previous video, we learned how can we answer the four types of queries. Now let's actually look at the original problem statement. In the original problem, we are given n words and m relations between the words, where each relation is of two types. Two words u and v are synonyms, and two words u and v are antonyms. So we need to first take in these m relations and after that we need to answer q queries of the form given two words u and v check if they are synonyms or antonyms or neither synonym or antonym so first you should be able to realize that this problem is exactly the same as the enemy and friends problem because if two words are synonyms then they are friends and if two words are antonym then we can say they are enemies. So this means we can use the exact same data structure which we built in the first part of this video to solve this problem. So the first thing to realize is that we need to output 1, 2 or 3. 1 refers to the words being synonyms, 2 refers to the words being antonyms and 3 refers to the words being none of the above 2. So now let's try to work out the first example test case which contains three words hate love and like there are three relations between those words and there are four queries for finding the relations between four pairs of words so the first relation which has the index for love being two and the index for like being three so you wish to v is three so there's an edge from two to three which is of type 1, which means that they are synonyms. And there's an edge in the second query or in the second relation from love, which is u is 2, and v, which is hate is 1, of type 2, which means that they are antonyms. However, note that the third one is invalid because from 1 to 3, they cannot be synonyms. So this edge over here, could not have been a green edge because that would mean that 1 and 2 are antonyms, 2 and 3 are synonyms, so 1 and 3 have to be antonyms, they cannot be synonyms. So that's why we need to output yes, this relation is okay, yes, this relation is okay, but no, this relation basically causes a discrepancy. So that's what we need to output for the first M lines. Now, for the next Q lines, we need to answer these queries. And the queries are check if uh, the relation between the two nodes u and v is 1, 2, or 3. So in the first query, we have love and like, which is u is 2 and v is 3. And you can see that there are they are friends, or basically the they are synonyms. So 1 would be the output. And similarly, you can check that the output for the remaining for the remaining three queries would all be twos because love and hate, like and hate and hate and like are all antonyms as per the graph. And that's why the output for this, for the Q lines would be one and triple two. So now that we have worked out the sample test case, let's try to formalize and finalize our solution. And then let's look at the code, which does exactly the same idea of the enemies and friends problem and just uses the input and output required to solve the code forces problem. So first, let's take in the M relations. Each relation is of the form T, which is the type of the relation, U and V. Note that we need to convert the word to a number U and V. And I'll show you how to do that easily when we get to the code part. But for now, suppose that U and V refers to 2 and 3, which are the indices of the words. So let's say we are given T, U and V. So the first case is obviously there are only two cases, t is 1 or t is 2. If t is 1, then we need to basically make u and v friends. So we need to merge u and v as friends. So that's why if u and v are already enemies, then we need to print no that the uh, relation was invalid. Otherwise, we need to merge them as friends and also print yes because we know that u and v successfully became friends.
or this is basically uh, friends means synonyms and uh, enemies means antonyms that's why this idea works now secondly if t is 2 then obviously we need to check if they are friends already we need to print no in that case otherwise we need to merge as enemies and not friends so this should actually be enemies because uh, they are antonyms and that's why u and v will become enemies and again we need to print yes and then and that takes care of the m relations so we have solved the first part of the problem now for the second part we need to handle the q queries so for the q queries we are given two um, words u and v and we'll convert them easily to two numbers u and v now once we have converted them to two numbers u and v if u and v are friends we'll print one because one means a friend as said before synonym friend two means antonym so enemy so that's why if these two are enemies we'll print two otherwise we know that they are neither friends nor enemies so we print three because they are not antonyms i mean they are not synonyms or antonyms so now that we have got the logic on pen and paper let's first implement the extension of the dsu data structure and then let's implement the code for the main part of the problem and i'll show you how to handle converting the words to the actual node numbers u and v we can do that easily in the code so do stay till the end of this video so in the code first i have a dsu data structure so in the dsu data structure i have an int n and the parent array p now as i mentioned in the constructor we'll take in the value n the nodes are numbered from 0 to n minus 1 so that's why we have an array of size 2 into n so for all 0 to n minus 1 and uh, for all 0 to n minus 1 and for n to 2 n minus 1 we initialize parent of i's i note that 0 to n minus 1 represents the friend leaders and n to 2 n minus 1 represents the enemy leaders this makes the code more compact precisely the find function becomes very simple it's exactly the same find function what we used to do for normal dsu now the r friends is just going to say simply if the elements u and v are have the same find value so just to remind you that u find u gives the friend leader of u and find v gives the enemy leader of p now you should realize that for checking our enemies we need to check that the friend leader of u is the same as the enemy leader of v or the friend leader of v is the same as the enemy leader of u and as i mentioned find u returns the friend leader of u but find u plus n gives us the enemy leader of u and this is because the enemy leader of 0 is n 1 is n plus 1 2 is n plus 2 and so on all the way up till n the enemy leader of n minus 1 would be 2 into n minus 1 or basically n minus 1 plus n and that's why just simply checking find of n plus v will give us the enemy leader of v and find of u plus n will give the enemy leader of u now that we have check friends and check enemies complete the next function is the merge friends so the merge friends simply works as mentioned in the video we need to merge the friend list of v with the friend list of u and the enemy list of v with the enemy list of u and as mentioned in the code over here 
we just need to check find u plus n to give the enemy leader of u and the enemy leader of v. Now merge enemies work similarly because we need to merge the enemy list of v uh, with the enemy list of uh, with the friend list of u and the enemy list of u with the friend list of v. So that takes care of merge enemies and, uh, and merge friends. So with these four functions, we are ready with our extended version of the DSU data structure. Now let's look at the main function. In the main function, first I take in an MQ, which are the number of nodes, the number of relations and the number of queries. Now, as I mentioned, we need to be able to handle the conversion from a word to an index. So a very easy way to do that would be to use a map. So we do a map from a string to an int called vals. And what vals stores is vals of a sub of some string s is i means that the element at position i in the array of strings is capital S. So that's exactly what we need to do to build the map data structure, or I mean the map for vals. We'll take in a string s and we'll set vals of the string s to s. So a better name uh, to i, a better name would be position. So position of s is i and position basically stores the, the position at which the string is. So since all the strings are unique, we can uniquely map a string to a position and that's why we are able to use the indices as elements of the DSU. So now when we answer the M, when we take in the M relations, we take in the type of the relation T and we take in two strings U and V or two strings A and B. We take in T, A and B. We set U to be the position at which A is and V to be the position at which B is. So this is a quick hack to be able to basically convert a string to a position by using a simple MAM data structure. And now once we do the casework for T, we realize that if the type is one, then we basically need to check if they are enemies, if you and we are enemies. And if they are enemies, then um, we need to print no. If they aren't enemies, then we need to do two things. The first thing is merging U and V, and the second thing is printing out yes. Similarly, in the second case, if they are enemies, we need to print no. Otherwise, we basically need to um, merge the two as enemies and print yes. And a similar thing will happen for answering the queries where we just basically need to call our friends, our enemies. And once we have reached the third case in which they are not friends and not enemies, we need to print three. So now that we have taken care of the M relations and the Q queries, and we have completed the code all together with the DSU implementation, let's just run this code to see whether or not it works on the sample test cases. So as you can see in the second sample test case, we got the correct output. And now let's just submit this code to see if it gets accepted. So as you could see, my code got accepted. As you could see through the journey of this problem, this problem was a really interesting and hard problem on how we can extend the standard disjoint set union data structure to answer queries of an unusual form, which is making two nodes or as enemies of each other. And for that, we learned the extended DSU. So I hope you like this video and my solution to this problem. Thank you.